Hello there. So, Sophie and I heard that you wanted to have a little tour of our home. Well, come in and we'll show you around. So welcome back to my apartment here in Edinburgh and regular viewers of this channel will recognize this room instantly because it's the room that I spend most time in. And so the last time I did a tour of my whole apartment was the first week that I moved in here which was just over two years ago. So I thought that it was definitely time for me to do that once again and especially because the place has changed so much since then that I thought it would be really fun to go through all of the changes and look back on how the whole place has developed over the years. When I first moved in here it was quite different to how it looks now and in fact the reason for this video was I was going through pictures of the flat a few days ago and I was quite surprised at how much things had changed in the last two years. And when you're living with them and making the changes every day yourself, you don't really recognize how that is happening. But then when you step back and look at pictures from side by side, you can really see just how much has changed, not only in the room, but as you as a person as well. So we're starting here in my living room. And this is probably the most recognizable room because it's a room that I film in the most. For me, this has to be not only a place where I relax and unwind, but it's also kind of like a studio for me because it's where I film a lot of my content and videos. So it's kind of like not only a relaxing space, but also a film set, which is pretty interesting. And I really like the way that I've managed to merge those two functions together for this room and be able to enjoy them either way. So whether I'm relaxing or filming, I like this room and I think that it's great for both purposes. Now, one of the things that I wanted to change immediately when I moved into this flat was the colour of the paint on the walls. I'm not sure whether you remember, but at the beginning it was quite stark white and although it looked very bright and light, for me it was lacking warmth and depth. So over the last two years I've kind of had a bit of a journey with the paint colours on the walls, as you will know if you've been watching, and I've changed the colour twice. First, we had The Mouse's Back by Farron Ball, which was kind of a dark, beigey colour, which was really beautiful, and I was very happy with the decision with that. But, because this is a basement apartment and there is light lacking in Edinburgh, generally speaking, it could be quite dark in here and although that was quite cosy and cocooning for me to live here as a working studio and a space for me to film I was struggling a lot with the light so it was time for me to think about what I could do to fix that problem. So the current colour that you see on the walls was only recently done about a month or so ago and this is a colour by Lick and I just thought that it was a more uplifting, brighter colour but it also has the depth that I was looking for warmth it's got a little bit of a hint of a gray but not too cold so it's still warm but not overly warm so it's got everything that I was looking for and actually I'm really enjoying the color in the room now because it's everything that I wanted it to be and I think it's really classy so I'm happy that I changed the wool color sometimes I think you have to admit your mistakes to yourself and just get over that I think uh, I'd only painted the walls about a year before this and some people would think, oh, I'm just going to leave it and deal, uh, live with it. But for me, I have to just say, okay, you made a mistake about that. Fix it and find what's going to work for you. So that is what I always do. And it's what I would always advise when you're decorating your house. So over the years, as I've lived and enjoyed this apartment, although I've taken a lot of things away and really honed my style down, I've also added a few things. And this sizable rug is the newest addition to the room. I got it about three months ago and I'd been waiting for a rug for a long, long time. 
it was quite bare without the rug. The, the floors are all wooden, so it can feel quite sparse and there's a lot of noise coming from the floors when you're wearing shoes and having my little dog Sophie who's got little claws and they make a tapping sound. So I think the rug was something that has really grounded the room, provided a focal point and also added a lot of comfort and texture. That is something that I really like in my rooms, lots of textures and fabrics and this really beautiful sisal material is something that I've always admired, so it was something that I knew that I was going to have. Now, if you'd have told me two years ago that I would be buying a rug with a black border, I probably wouldn't have believed that. I'm not saying that this is such a drastic thing, but my style was a lot more, uh, let's say, feminine and soft, and so I never really thought of incorporating black into my rooms. But actually, I really love black in a room now, even if it's just a little touch like the border of this rug, I think it adds a real chic tone to the room and gives it that crisp modern look that I wanted to have. So although my style is quite classic, I'm starting to enjoy a little bit of modern too. Now, On the subject of adding black to the room, these prints are also a way that I've done that. And these are actually something that I bought mm, about a year ago and I'd noticed them on the street in an antique store probably a year before that and really wanted to buy them but couldn't really, I didn't know, I didn't know whether it was justifiable to spend so much money even though they weren't that much by the way. These are not very expensive pieces but in terms of my budget they were at the time. So I kind of looked at them, took pictures of them and then forgot about them and then about a year later, which was not so long ago, I saw them again and I thought this time I have to get them and I managed to negotiate with the seller and managed to get a very good price. So this was a bargain for me. And I just really love these prints. They're actually maps, uh, layout maps of the new town in Edinburgh and that is where I live. This, is, this was developed in the 18th century and it's a very classical layout of streets running in consecutive lines. So some people have said to me, I think you should probably hang these two pictures above each other rather than side by side. But actually, the way that this has been designed is that it should be one. And this street, which is called Queen Street, runs across the whole thing. So it's, it's, it's kind of uh, depicting the map. So this is the way they need to be laid out. And I just really like the classic element of these, but also the masculinity that they bring to a room. I've always really admired maps uh, and things like that. So these are a great purchase and I think even if I move from Edinburgh they're a nice momentum of my time here and so I'll always look back on them fondly and actually it's quite cool because my house is even on the map somewhere as well. So although I don't really have a huge budget in my life to be able to afford me to buy lots of art I am a huge admirer of art. I'm always in art galleries. I always go to, when I'm, whenever I'm visiting a new city, I always, one of the first things I like to do is go to an art gallery. And so the art in my home is always quite personal. With the prints that we just saw, they're obviously of Edinburgh where I live, so they'll always be relevant to my life. And this is kind of the same thing with this oil painting that you see here. Now this is by an artist called Rupert Aker and he is a Cotswold, Cotswold based artist and I just happened to be attending an exhibition when I lived in the Cotswolds and I saw some of his work and I really liked it. I just thought that it was so impressionistic but when you come close up these little sheep are just literally blodges of paint and I find it quite cool that when you stand back it forms the bigger picture and I also liked the kind of darkness of it as well, mixed with the prettiness of these flowers here and then the light sky. So this is actually a village called Blockley in the Cotswolds, where I lived for about two years. And so again, this is something that means something to my life. It has a story. And whenever I look at this painting, it just brings back memories of times gone by. So again, wherever I move in the world, I think I'll always bring these kind of paintings with me as they are mementos and stories of the life that I've lived so far. And that's what I really like about collecting things like that. Now, although my style has changed a lot, I do think it's important to kind of keep an element of who you are. And 
I always loved flowers and botanicals and that featured heavily in my decor over the last 10 years that I've had my own home. In fact, I remember looking back on pictures and there's just flowers everywhere. That's in objects, paintings and even flowers in vases. So I've kind of eliminated that a lot in my life, but I wanted to keep a little piece of it. And so this is a new thing that I have. And this is actually quite cool because it's a botanical print that was designed by me in collaboration with an artist called Israel de Alcantara. And this is artwork that is depicted on my botanica candle. Uh, I wanted to, I thought it'd be really cool to, as the artwork on the candle is so gorgeous, to be able to enjoy it in a bigger scale. So I decided to make print versions of the artwork on the candle. There's this one and another one which I will show you. And these are now available to buy on my website, nicholasfairford.com. And it's quite cool because it just comes as the print rolled up in a special box. So it's very easy to ship and receive, and then you can decide what frame you want. So I think this frame cost me about 25 pounds. So this is a pretty good big piece of artwork that you can get that will not cost the earth, but will really add an impact into your interior. Just off the living room, behind the living room, is this room, which is the dining room. And what I like about this room is that sometimes I think dining rooms can be one of those places that you have because you think you need it, and then it just gets shut away and it's only used for special occasions like Christmas. But what I like about this one is that the house really flows, so you've got the living room that way, and then it comes through here, and then there we have the kitchen. So it flows really well in kind of like a circle. So this room, even though I don't sit at the dining table every single day, you can set the table up like I have now, or even if you just make it simple with flowers and books, but you get to walk through here every day to get to the kitchen so it makes the room feel more alive rather than being a dead space that you never get to see. So yeah, I like the luxury of having this room as kind of a walk-through uh, anteroom to the kitchen and it's fun to always do different table settings or displays in here and make it look beautiful as part of the decor of the home. So I really do appreciate having this room. And at special occasions when I have friends over or for Christmas or birthdays, then you can set the table, you can comfortably, comfortably sit eight people around here. So that's quite a lot. That's about how many friends I have here in Edinburgh anyway and you can have a really nice dinner in this room. The other great thing is that it has quite nice light in here. There's a huge sash window just here. So the light comes in. What a nice view of the terraced garden. So this is quite a special room, and I always like having a dining room, even though some people think they can be redundant. But for me, I do like a dedicated room where you can eat and chat and sit with friends. So yeah, this room is pretty cool. Now, the paint colour that you see on the walls here is the colour that I was referring to in the living room, and that's how it was painted when I first moved in. So yeah, although it's quite a bright white and it looks good in here, I do think that I am going to paint this room as well. You know me, I like to make changes and really get myself busy in the house, so that is something that I've been thinking of. And I think with a room like this, which is designed for more pleasure and occasion, you can go a little bit more uh, exotic and exciting. So I'm thinking about what I can do in here to do that. Again, it's also a room that you just walk through and pass through, so it can be very interesting. You don't have to sit in here all day and relax, so you can do something a bit more fun. So I am considering some options, and I was thinking of maybe doing like a high gloss lacquer effect on the walls with a, a mossy green, which I think could look really good. The artwork that you see in here is very simple. It kind of harks back to the days when I was obsessed with florals, which I still am, but not so much in my decor. So they're all things that I got very inexpensively. These three prints here, I found them in a charity shop in the Cotswolds about seven years ago. And then I got the guy who makes all of my frames to make some special frames. And they're actually, they're gilt wood frames. So even though the, uh, the print is quite cheap, if you add a nice frame to it, you can have a really good look in the room.
So, as you can see, I have set the table here. It's quite a simple table setting, but I quite like the effect of this look with this grey tablecloth. We have the brown wine glasses with the brown rattan and also these brown plates. And I really like that muted elegance. On these plates we have my Nicholas Fairford napkins, which I absolutely love. These are called the Garden Collection napkins and these were made in Italy. We're using recycled fabric, which is great for the environment, which I'm very proud of. But the quality of them is just stunning. They're so thick and they really are quite a big napkin. And they've been embroidered here with four designs, which I created a few years ago. And they each represent a little joy from an English garden. So I really love these napkins and they're great for so many different occasions. Okay, so let's go through here to the kitchen. So the kitchen is another room in my home that you've probably seen quite a lot if you are a regular viewer of this channel. As you know, cooking, baking, entertaining is something that I really do take pleasure and enjoy a lot in my life. So the kitchen is a place where I spend a lot of time. Now, when I moved in here, this kitchen is pretty much how it looked now, except that it had red tiles on the wall, which just to me seemed so bizarre and totally not in keeping with the rest of the place. And I just thought I really will not be able to live with that for very long. So I lived with it for about six to nine months, I would say. And then I needed to find an easy solution to replace the red tile. So what I did was I actually found some stick-on tiles from Amazon and that was quite easy to do. So I think the effect looks really good now. It brightens up the whole room and the red which was just creating this very white and red don't really go well together in the interior. So it was creating this very bizarre scheme and just made the kitchen look quite dark. Now it looks bright and I think it looks clean and functional. So I actually enjoy uh, working in here now and filming because also on camera it tended to look a little bit weird with the red in the background. It was quite uh, overpowering. So changing up the tiles in here really has improved the whole room. I'm very happy with how easy that was to do. Now even though the kitchen is not a massive room, when I'm filming for YouTube you tend to only see that part of the room where we were just filming and that is because the island is there so it's easy for me to prepare food and bake and also I quite like the angle where you get to see all of the white. But yeah this is kind of the other side of the kitchen so you've got the sink here where I wash up <laughs> don't really do a lot of that, I have a dishwasher and then we have a washing machine and now this is something that I find quite strange even though I've grown up in the UK and it's what I'm used to but I never understand why people have the washing machine in the kitchen in Europe and I'm probably I think in the US as well the washing machine if it has to go anywhere it will be in the bathroom which it seems to me more logical because your clothes are going to be there and I just I really don't enjoy having that there but that is something that I'll have to deal with and fix another time so yeah this room is pretty small uh, it does exactly what it says on the tin but I do like this room it's bright uh, I, I think it looks clean and I do enjoy cooking here but the only downside to this room is that it doesn't have a window so as you saw when I was walking through to the kitchen, it has the archway and then the dining room has quite a large sash window. So you do get natural daylight in here, but still not enough. Still not enough light that I would prefer. I'm all about lots of daylight, beautiful sunshine coming in. And so sometimes you can feel like on a sunny day, you don't want to be spending too much time in the kitchen. You want to kind of do what you have to do and then get out into the sunshine in the rooms where there's natural light. So I'd say that is the only downside of this apartment and this kitchen is that the light's a bit lacking. Now, one of the things that I'm most known for is my love of tea. So I had to share with you, I'm sure you've seen it before, but I do drink tea every day and I actually have my own range of loose leaf tea, which is my favorite. Uh, it comes in these little pouches that you can reseal uh, and I've got a few varieties. I have English breakfast, Earl Grey, Rose, Almond and we also did a special tea for Christmas which 
I have some left over, the Christmas tea, which is, even though it's not Christmas anymore, this has the most wonderful scent, and sometimes it's just what I'm looking for. So yeah, tea is a huge ritual in my life. So I had to have my own range of teas. And you can check them out on my uh, blog, nicholasfairford.com. They really are a great little product. And uh, if you like tea, I'm sure you will love these. I also have my other teas here, which are mostly from Fortnum & Mason. These are gifts that I've received over the years. Uh, I do like the Fortnum & Mason Earl Grey tea. And it comes in this tin. Uh, it has the most wonderful scent. Mm. So yeah, lot, this is kind of like my tea station here. I don't really drink coffee that often, but I do have it in the house just in case I have someone over and they want coffee. But really, I'm all about the tea. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a space that I've never really shown on YouTube, on the channel. In fact, I never have. Um, this is the back hallway that goes through to the bedrooms. So um, this room is kind of something that I've left as an afterthought because it's basically a room that you just pass through, a corridor, but also it's quite an awkward room. There's doors everywhere. Uh, there's no light, no natural light. And so it's kind of difficult to imagine how I, or what I would do with the space. But I think it is going to be my next project because it is a room that you have to pass through quite a lot. At the minute, it doesn't bring me any joy. And you know me, I'm all about joy in the small things. So I think really sprucing up this space without spending too much money will bring a lot of pleasure to my life and really improve the overall look of this flat. So when I was in the kitchen saying that this flat flows really well, it really does. So the living room is just behind you there through there and then this way is the kitchen so you can go through the living room then the dining room the kitchen and then back through here so it goes in a nice flow which i think is why this flat feels so happy and so lovely for me to live here it really has a nice energy about it and i'm all about that so yeah this is the hallway um it's quite a bland, boring space, and I did think, what's the point in showing it? But I did say this is a full house tour, and I think it's sometimes good to see the real side of life and things that perhaps don't look so beautiful, but that can be improved. So I am really thinking about, I'm definitely gonna paint the walls, make it some, I think with a dark room, you can't really try to fight making it brighter with bright paint. It's already white on the walls. So I think definitely need something dark and rich and kind of like a jewel box effect in here. So I'm excited to try that out. And of course, as always, I would love to hear your thoughts and input if you have any ideas for this very bland space. Do let me know. I'm always interested to hear your thoughts. So through here on the left is my bedroom. So let's have a look. So welcome to my bedroom and this is the room that I've most recently refurbished. So even though I didn't do a lot to the room, I painted the walls using a colour by Lick called Green 19, which I absolutely love. It's such a beautiful, earthy, dark green. And this room, again, was painted in the same white as was in the dining room and the living room. And since I painted it, I just think it's given the room so much more character, depth, and it's become a place where I really enjoy just relaxing in. I love this earthy, muted tones of the room. Uh, I dressed the bed with this grey bedspread and then we've got some green. So I just really love the earthiness and the coziness of this space now that it's been redecorated a little bit. Also, I think this room is kind of a reflection of the taste that has evolved over the two years that I've been here. It's quite minimalistic in terms of what I would have have done maybe a few years ago. In fact, in my last apartment where I did a bedroom makeover, that room was totally the opposite to this. It was kind of like a, a masculine pink color, but it had a bed canopy over the bed. It was quite uh, ostentatious and a bit over the top, even though it was very beautiful and I can look back and see that I liked the room. This is kind of more me, very simple, chic and elegant. Now, I'm not sure whether you remember this skirted table, 
but it used to live in the living room. And when I was decluttering and rearranging the room to be more of what I wanted, I decided to take it out. And I was going to just put this away. It's a very simple table, very inexpensive. The fabric is Colfax and Fowler. Uh, so I could have just folded that away and put the table somewhere else. But actually, I just thought that for now, I would put it here in the window of the bedroom. It's kind of like a nice feature table. It has some flowers on it now. Sometimes I have some candles and stuff but it makes the room more of a, a place to relax and enjoy. So that is that for now. Now my plan for this room is I would like to make it more of a place where I can really hunker down and relax. One of the things that I've always wanted to do but never have is sit in bed and watch television. I do not own a TV in this house, not even one. So I really don't watch a lot of TV, but I recognise that it is something that I would like to start doing a little bit more often. So not like crazily watching TV all the time, but in the evenings I can see how it would be beautiful to lay in bed with some candles lit and watch some good TV for an hour or so. So my plan is to kind of maybe have a TV on this wall here. And then I would also like to have a really comfortable armchair in the room so that if I don't want to watch TV in bed, can watch it on the armchair so that I have another place to sit and relax. Sometimes my living room has to be a lot of things all at once. So as I mentioned before, it's a place where I film a lot. It's quite a formal room now that I've paired it back. I used to have two big cozy armchairs in there, which I got rid of. So now we just have one sofa and the two carver chairs that we have here as well. So it can be sometimes difficult to really relax there and I can't imagine me ever wanting to put a TV in that room because I think it would just spoil the overall look and aesthetic. So I think this is going to become not only my bedroom but also maybe like a TV sitting room where I get to relax in the evenings. And I think it's nice to use rooms as dual for dual purposes. So that should be quite fun. So yes, this is the bedroom and I like it because it's got a pretty much a mix of old and new. The bed is new. I had that about two months ago. The side tables, also they're very different. They each have a different, there's a different side table on each side of the bed and they're both pieces of furniture that I bought very cheaply from a market and painted it with chalk paint. Did that a very long time ago so I think it might be time to either replace these with something else. I'd like to do another painting project but with a new piece of furniture. This one especially is looking quite old. So I think I'm going to do that. And then we've got the chairs here. We have, so these are two, two more of the chairs that we have in the living room. Again, very useful just to have. Sometimes at night, if you can't be bothered to hang up your clothes, that is me, very occasionally. So I can just drape them over there. Or if you want to sit while you're dressing, it's good to have that. And then the lamps are quite new in the room. Actually very new, I only had them a few months ago. Can you see them? Yeah. So the, these were from TK Maxx, I believe in the US it's called TJ Maxx. Um, and they are something that I perhaps wouldn't have bought two years ago, but with my new sense of adventure and style with my interiors, I picked those up for a good price. And I think they really bring a youthful edge to the room. Before I had some floral lamps, which they are in storage. I still love them, but they're not really me anymore. So yeah, these little small changes, lamps, cushions, textures, paint colors really do make a difference and can spice up the room in a way that you wouldn't expect. Now, as I mentioned before, I was thinking about putting the painting that's above the fireplace in the living room on the wall here. And I think that could look quite nice because the room's very plain and that would bring like a real colour to the room and a classicism that we don't currently have. But if I'm going to do that, I will definitely change the frame. So what do you think of the bedroom? Let me know. So one of the things that I enjoy the most about living in this flat is that I have access to this beautiful outdoor space, which is just my own. Uh, I always wanted to have a little garden, 
but I'm not really experienced in gardening. So this has been kind of the perfect way for me to begin because it is all, it's a courtyard, so it's all paved with stone. Uh, I can plant planters in pots and I don't have to worry too much about whether they work or not. So it's been kind of a way for me to have a garden, but not the full-time maintenance of what a bigger garden would be. So this has been really great for me to have. And as you can see, the sun is shining down on here. It's south facing. So now the summertime is coming. It's a great little sun trap. It's a wonderful place to sit out here with friends and have drinks or a lunch. So I'm so, so delighted to be able to have this space of my own to enjoy. It's like having extra room and uh, it's really, really one of my favourite places in this apartment. Now one of the things that I get asked about so many times when I have, whenever I film in the garden are about these doors and people ask me, is it a shared courtyard, is that somebody's house? <laughs> and it always makes me smile. Uh, so I thought that I'd let you know. This is a storage unit that belongs to me, so I have the key and it's a great place to store lots of stuff. It's mostly filled with junk, to be honest, that I need to go through and sort out. But so yeah, I have three of these storage units in this property and they're built into the wall here. So no, this is not a shared courtyard and this, someone doesn't live in this cave. <laughs> it's just <laughs> a storage unit, which is very, very handy and makes it even more cool. So yes, this is my little courtyard garden and even though I've done a little bit with it over the last year or so, there is lots more that I would like to do. For me, it's all about budget and priorities, so when I have a little bit more budget to work on the garden, I definitely will. It's looking a little bit bare at the minute, so I definitely need to buy more pots, fill them with flowers and plants, and just really maximise this space, because as I said before, it is a wonderful place to come out and relax. You might be able to see on the floor that there's lots of little dried petals. This has been the bane of my life for the last four weeks. Springtime here in Edinburgh is absolutely stunning, but one thing that I didn't account for is that all of the blossom when it sheds comes down into this courtyard, which can be a little battle that I have to face every day. So every morning I'm waking up to, it's almost like snow on the ground, filled with petals that I'm having to sweep. So that is my daily battle for now, but I guess there are worse things in life to have to do. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that you enjoyed seeing my flat. As I said before, it's been quite some time since I did a full tour of the whole place. In fact, it was when I moved in, so I thought that it would be great to do that again and share it with you, as you so often get to see snippets of it on my videos, but not all at once in one video. So hopefully you have enjoyed touring it with me. As always, it's a pleasure for me to share things with you. So nice to be here filming again, and I look forward to seeing you very soon. But until then, I hope you have a wonderful week, and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.